Hello, good evening. Kind of a wet Wednesday, ain't it? Trying to get all fixed up here for Bible study. I hope you'll tune in and join us. And if you're there, say something so we know you're here. Looky there, there's people. Hello, Janie, Amber Willis. Welcome. Whitney, Mary, Paula, Shandy. Misty, Crystal, and Lori, and Chelsea, and Jen, and Katie. Hello, Katie. And Jim. All right. Good. And Dustin. Glad y'all are able to be with us tonight. Uh, we're, we're still uh, keeping up the prayer list, prayer request list, so if you have prayer requests, May 3rd, May 3rd, that's what we're looking forward to. Be sure and put your prayer requests over in the comments. Um, Carol, how are you? Hello, Mona. Other notifications coming up on my screen, bugging me. And Misty and John and, is that Misty and John and Ashton? Hmm. Glad y'all are with us. Gonna need your Bible tonight. Hello, Bobby. Is it wet down at your house? <sighs> and Jimmy. And Johnny. Hello, John. Did you get them lights put up yet? Hope so. Hope, hope, hope you did. Hey, it's not just Paul and Anita, but Scott and Caitlin are here joining us. Scott went out and turkey hunted some this evening. He said he almost got one. Oh, did you get that? No, just hold on. I can ride it. Before it gets off my screen. I gotta just hold on. <sighs> you know, I've had some Caitlin confusion along. Caitlin's name doesn't have a Y in it. It's just, I got this right, C-A-I-T-L-I-N, right? Okay. Just, just FYI there. Uh, Lori spelled it with a Y instead of an I. But that's all right. Why is my name on that? She said good evening, Scott and Caitlin, too. Like, are you talking about me without my name? Yes. Do you need... You just want to come around here and read it. <laughs> Hello, Amy and Steve and Chase. Jonah? Haven't seen your name pop up on my deal. Glad you're here with us. Hello, Joy. I, I hear a rumor, Joy. So I was reading through the comments. The rumor was you hadn't missed a single one of these. And Misty says, hey, Scott and Caitlin, love and miss you guys. Glad that you're better. Boy, I am too. And we may be glad that she's uh, doing better, but she's glad she's doing better. <laughs> glad you all have tuned in this evening. We're going to. We're going to look at a couple different portions of Scripture tonight, but we're going to look with one thing in mind, and that has uh, been brought to my mind because of some of y'all's prayer requests. Uh, hey, now you know. And you can find her here on Facebook, too. So, Right? You're on Facebook, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you guys quit talking about me? Nope, I won't. <laughs> 
She says sorry. I didn't know how she spelled it. Now she knows how you spell it. Um, tonight we're going to talk about uh, some things that's brought up to uh, my mind because of uh, prayer requests that's been made by Katie and by Jen. So, hello, Donnie. Glad you're with us tonight. I hope you're uh, faring out the rain in Kansas there very well. Hi, John. That's funny. Donnie, it comes up like uh, four comments down from your comment that you joined the group here tonight. So that's, I'm like, that makes me feel better because technology is about sometimes as fast as I am getting with it. Um, I do, before we get into this very far, I know there may be some that will watch this later on uh, YouTube and I'm gonna apologize up front if it don't load up it I sat here for uh, about three hours this afternoon two or three hours with one, a 10 minute video trying to get it to load on YouTube today and I had to vacate that one and start it all over and it still took like 25 minutes and usually it takes about five minutes so it could be that the uh, interwebs getting plugged up and needing some Drano or something to get things moving on along. Hey, there's Jeremy. Jeremy, glad you're with us. Uh, hope y'all could enjoy a nice hot cup of coffee on this cool evening or your favorite uh, soft drink or whatever while we're having Bible study. And there's Hannah Carnes. Glad you're with us, Hannah. Um... <sighs> I like to teach principles out of the Bible that start off with the Bible. And so that, that's my purpose with reading Scripture ahead of when we uh, talk very much about what's going on. And, and so tonight we're going to do that. But there, there's a principle, and I don't mind sharing it all with you. There's Helen Larkin. I, hope Jim, I imagine Jim's with her. And uh, I heard today is Helen and Jim's 51st wedding anniversary. So, happy anniversary, Helen and Jim. Hello, Kathy. Glad you're with us. Yeah. So, happy anniversary. Glad, glad you're with us, Jim and Helen. And I feel like I was trying to get them to laugh. I, I posted a comment on her uh, post about that. 51st wedding anniversary. Wow, Jim's 51 already? I didn't know. I mean, he looks so young and everything. He must have got married when he was a baby. <laughs> I ain't saying anything for Helen. He had to have been robbing the cradle probably too. Um, so tonight before we get started, and we've had a couple prayer requests, but go ahead and uh, put, if you have prayer requests, put it there in the comments and we'll pray over those before we quit this evening but we want to pray to get started so let's go to the lord in prayer heavenly father thank you lord for this day thank you for the rain that you've sent our way and uh, father thank you for your your blessings on our lives and father uh, i just i know that each one of us can stop and count our blessings every day and that we don't do that near enough and we don't give you the credit enough for it so father just forgive us for for that failure on our part and help us lord that we will uh, stop and give you the the thanks that you deserve for blessing our lives so much and father we thank you tonight for your word i thank you that you have given it to us and with a purpose that we would study it and understand more about how you want us to to be and and what the true picture of a christian should look like and so Father, tonight as we study it, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us and in us, stirring up things that you would, would have us to be made uh, anew with. And Father, that your will would be done and that you would receive the glory. In Jesus we pray. Amen. <clears throat> First, uh, I actually have one uh, scripture that I really, I don't intend to go there and read it at all. It's been in our study that we've been doing in Mark on Sunday night recently and so any of you that's been studying with us you're going to remember this there was four guys you probably know the story 
or the the account of what happened there was four guys who had a lame friend and they took him to Jesus and they couldn't get to Jesus because the house where Jesus was at was so full of people and so they took and uh, got this guy up on the roof and then tore up the roof and let him down through the hole in the roof in front of Jesus and Jesus healed him and he got up and walked out of there uh, and I failed to say so but I kind of think there's a point where I might have fell through the hole in the roof if I had been one of those guys on the roof uh, dancing around, jumping up and down, shouting that he's walking, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I want you to notice those four did everything required. They did all they could do. Uh, and did you see that? Uh, they did all they could do and they in order that their friend would get to Jesus. that that they You might say they paved the way, but they did more than that. They carried him down the way. They caused him to have a confrontation uh, to be brought right in front of Jesus. And so whenever we think about that, i got to ask you, are you the kind of person who would be willing to do what God would have you to do with your friends. And notice that would be to bring them to Jesus, to stop at nothing. Now, they could have got him all the way there and said, oh, the house is too full, we can't get in. You know, They could have uh, carried him all the way to where Jesus was and said, golly, there's so many people here, we just can't get there. Um, I, I've had a, a friend that I prayed for and and I'm still praying for that that he will get himself into church. But I had a friend that I prayed for for many years, and uh, never made what seemed like any headway in in bringing him to Jesus. But I never give up. I mean, we ought to be ones who were uh, willing. I know you're able, but willing to uh, have conversations with others about your Savior. That you would be ones who who bring people to Jesus. And you know, we, we can't just put their name on a card and stick it on a cross and pray for them, but we have to pray that God would give us opportunity that we would be able to tell them about Jesus. And your life tells them a lot, but a lot of people would just say, well, they lived a good life, not knowing that we lived a life for Jesus. Uh, what, what I'm doing is not all about me, uh, but it, rather it's about him whom I serve. And I, I would that, I, I don't want to get to the judgment day and show up empty handed, and I know you don't either, but I would that I would be one that would be found faithful to have done what the Lord has told us to do. And the mandate is in Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. And, and if you're one of Jesus' followers, it's, it's on you too. Yeah, that was spoken for you. Uh, we, we look at that and say, well, he was with his disciples, and I want to tell you, he's with his disciples now. He, he's, he's telling us in our heart the things that his word tells us that we ought to do, and that is we ought to be about the business of bringing others to Jesus. I've, I've actually had people who were longtime Christians who came to me and told me that they believe the number one purpose of being a Christian was so that we would uh, live a holy life. <laughs> and I have found where it says in the scripture that we ought to be holy because he is holy. But his commandments are that we love one another. And I got to tell you, I, I don't know what was on those four friends of that lame man's heart, except they must have loved their friend enough that they didn't want to see him perish in an eternal hell. They brought him to Jesus because they believed in Jesus. And I see a place where in Scripture, we can find that <clears throat> this principle is exactly true one for one. It doesn't take four people do, go, getting together and, and helping one person find Jesus. It helps if they have numerous witnesses helping them to find Jesus or showing them the way to Jesus. But, but one for one, and it, it's found in John chapter 1, beginning verse 35, and this is what it says. And it's talking about uh, John 
at uh, right around the time of the baptism of Christ. And it says again, the next day John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. These were John's disciples, and they just turned and followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and seeing them, following, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day, and now it was about the tenth hour. And one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, whom we know as Peter. And he first found his own brother, Simon, whom we know as Peter, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And when he brought him to Jesus, now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You're Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. And the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. And Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. So we have the account that that uh, two of John's disciples followed Jesus to see what what he was all about, and they were caused to believe that that there would be uh, it would be found that he was the Messiah because John had pointed them that way. This is the one. Look what John's word were: "Behold, the Lamb of God." And another uh, one of the Gospels it says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so John knew who Jesus was and, and uh, he stated it plainly so that his followers and disciples knew who Jesus was. And uh, whenever they went to Jesus to, to ask him where you're staying, he said, Come and see. He didn't even have to tell them to go and tell. <laughs> he said, come and see. Come and see where I'm staying at. And so they went and saw where he was staying at and stayed with him a while, long enough to know who he really was. And one of them then went away and found his brother, who was Peter. And Peter that caused Peter to also come and see who Jesus was. And then the next day, he calls Nathan or Philip, and, and he says, Philip, come and uh, follow me. And Philip stayed with him just long enough to see who he was, and then immediately. You see, this is something that's lost on us Christians that have, have uh, we have Bible knowledge, and we have, uh, uh, I, I, I think we stress maybe too much a place to meet and get together and that if we make it to church on Sunday morning and Sunday evening and make it to church on Wednesday evening, then we've got the tiger by the tail. And the truth is, these people weren't worried about that. They were much more concerned about the the people whom they loved and they loved them enough to take them to Jesus. Just like those four friends and the lame man, just the same as Philip and Nathaniel. Nathaniel wasn't all about it. He says, he, he says, is there anything good that comes out of Nazareth? And Philip says, well, come and see. You know, there's one other place in the Bible where this same wording, come and see, was, was told to us. And it was the angel at the tomb. Uh, when Mary got there, uh, she seen this angel and and the angel says to her, come and see the place where he laid, and then go and tell. And I, I think that we miss here because Jesus didn't say, come and see, and then go and tell. He didn't have to tell them to go and tell because they loved each other. They were fulfilling the law of God that says that we all love each other so much that we wouldn't want others to, to perish. 
And so they would bring them to Jesus, whatever the cost was. They, they would bring them to Jesus. I, I wonder if Philip uh, didn't go to Nathaniel with some fear and intrepidation and, and maybe trembling in his shoes knowing that Nathaniel may not accept this one whom I know now to be Christ, but he, he decided it was worth it anyway. And so he went and told him, and we ought to be ones who would be willing, whatever the cost. I've had some people that I've witnessed with that I was pretty sure I'd lose friendship whenever I'd told them about Jesus because they were so lost, or they seemed to be so lost. But you know what? It didn't work out that way. I, I've even had some people who... who I knew did not live according to the scriptures who when I was witnessing to somebody else about the power of God and who Jesus is and how he, he loves you enough that he wouldn't have you to perish forever, that those people would agree with me, yet they still didn't follow him. And can I just tell you, I haven't found anywhere in the scripture where we're responsible for the results. We're not. It kind of hurts sometimes that the one you may witness to does not uh, share your belief and does not follow Jesus as, as we've been taught to follow Jesus. Doesn't trust him in their heart to be their Lord and Savior. But you know, I, I find that it's it's not on us. He, he, he didn't lay the results to be at our charge yet. It's true that he requires us he wants us, he desires us, and he has plainly asked us to do his bidding for him. So may I just say that you be faithful. You be faithful to tell others about Jesus. You know, uh, before this pandemic came on, it was our popular idea that even if you can't tell them about Jesus, you can invite them to church and you might be able to get them to come to church. And that's uh, definitely a possibility, but can, can I ask you something? What if somebody was dying? Let's just say you got in an automobile accident and you weren't hurt, but the other person was pinned in their car and bleeding excessively. Are you going to have time to invite them to church? <laughs> Are you going to have time to... to Say, well, let me go get Brother Paul. He, he can tell you how to be saved. And you need to know. You, you surely do know. You know. See how much training these people had when they went out. They didn't know uh, faith, F-A-I-T-H. They didn't know the cross training. They didn't, they didn't have the Romans road. They hadn't been written yet. Yet they went out and told others about Jesus. They went out and told them about his saving grace and his love for them. I, I got to tell you, I believe with one verse of Scripture, you can share the love of Jesus with others. You got to look for creative ways today, by the way, to do it. A lot of people who need to hear the worst want to hear the least. Yet, I find that they are usually in agreement with me when I quote one Scripture. And uh, you probably already know what it is, don't you? Probably. You probably anybody on here know what the one scripture it is that you could share with somebody that might point them to Jesus? There's uh, more people, all of them. You kind of remind me of that story of that church that was having financial trouble. Hey, before I tell this story, if you know the one verse that I'm thinking of that you could share with somebody that would tell them about the love that Jesus has for them, would you write what you think it is in the comments while I tell you this story, and then we're going to close with word prayer. Shh. You have to write it in the comments. There was this, uh, there was this church that was having some financial troubles, but they had a whole bunch of Bibles. And so the pastor had gotten his deacons together and, and had asked them, <laughs> Katie got it, had asked them to uh, take these Bibles with them and sell them. And so the uh, 
they they all took some Bibles home with them and sold them. And they had one deacon that stuttered terrible. And he, the he came back and asked the pastor, he said, can, can, can I have some, some more Bibles, please? And so he gave him some more, and he gave the pastor the money, and he come back the next day. He said, I need to do some more Bibles, please. And so he... Uh, Jeremiah 29. Okay. This is the one verse that probably everyone would know. <clears throat> and so uh, the the pastor gave him some more Bibles. And the third time he came back, handed the pastor the money. He said, I need some more Bibles. They're selling like hotcakes. And and so uh, the pastor said, I got to know how you're selling so many Bibles when none of the other deacons have been able to sell any. He says, well, I just go to a person's d d door and I n n n knock on it and ask them if they want to buy a Bible and they usually tell me no and he says well then l l let me re re read it to you and he said they buy them right away then <laughs> oh yes it's John 316 you know there was a study several years ago y'all was probably still students at camp whenever they come out with that study and they was videotaping people around the camp, asking them to quote John 3.16 on the spot. And you remember this? They played it on the big screen in there. And they said that there was more people who knew John 3.16 than what there was that was saved in the state of Oklahoma. And it was true. Because when they did that, there was a girl in our cabin at Peoria that was at camp that year that got saved because she seen herself quoting John 3.16 on the big screen and she realized that she did not have Jesus in her heart. She may have had a head knowledge of Jesus, but she didn't trust in him. It is a conscious decision to trust and follow Jesus. And it's a conscious decision that I hope you have made. If you have not made that decision and you want to, would you trust in him tonight? And I'm going to ask you to trust in him enough just to pick up the phone and call me right after we dismiss. I'm going to put it where I've got service, and Anita's going to put my phone number in the comments. So call me when this is over. And you can call me. You, I don't care if you call me right now, but honey, if you don't know Jesus by now, I'm not going to be able to help you. No. I can help you find Jesus. If you don't know him, Nita's going to put my number in the comments and you call me. I'd be happy to help you find him and pray with, with you anyway. So, tonight as we dismiss, did we have any new prayer requests? We had a couple that were mentioned. The uh, Fleming family and Shanice Zins and the Brandy Case family. It was Brandy's lost her mom, wasn't it? Yeah. So we need, and that one came in last time before we completely dismissed. So uh, tonight, I, I haven't seen Matt here, but he may be on here, uh, and I've seen Jimmy. So I'm going to ask Jimmy if you would join me in prayer and dismissing tonight, and uh, I'll let Jimmy type his prayer in, and Matt, if you're on here, you can type yours in. And uh, I'm going to pray, and, and then we'll be done. We will be back on here again Sunday morning, uh, bright and early, and then again Sunday evening. We're sure looking forward to May the 3rd when we'll be able to be together again in our building. And I want you, if you're on Facebook and not able to join us in person at that time, keep joining us on Facebook. Uh, because we're going to try our very best to continue. So thank you for being here, and let's go to the... Okay, Hannah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to add Hannah to here. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your word and what it says to us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, that we would be ones who care enough for our friends and our neighbors, that we would lead them to you, that we would do whatever it takes to bring our friends to you, Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for these accounts in the scripture where there was people who, who strived to bring their friends to Jesus and they did whatever it took. And Father, tonight we just thank you for the awesome privilege you've given us to know you through your word and, and Father, that uh, 
that we can see who you are and what's described of you there. And Father, for your indwelling Holy Spirit, we just thank you for that. Now, Lord, we want to lift up these prayer requests. There's been many more than what were mentioned tonight uh, that's mentioned the last few meetings, and we just want to lift each one of them to you. And, Father, that you would attend to each one of those needs, and, Father, that you would uh, strengthen those who are weak and who are suffering, and, Father, that you would uh, uh, just be with the ones that have lost loved ones lately, that they would uh, have a peace that can only be found in you. And, Father, that you would just help them in their time of grief. And, Lord, for each one of us, that you would help us to be able and willing to do your bidding for you, to to tell others about you, the love that we have in Jesus. And we thank you for Jesus, and it's in his wonderful and matchless and perfect and awesome name we pray. Amen. Bye.